Because of Walt Whitman's lengthy and unique forms, many people believe the myth that Whitman did not revise his poems or put much thought into crafting them. This couldn't be farther from the truth. In this video, we will take a look at how Whitman's manuscripts and time itself prove that Whitman spent great time and care crafting and editing his poems. First, let's take a look at Whitman's poem, I Sang the Body Electric. Between the 1855 edition and the 1856 edition, Whitman added a very lengthy catalog of body parts. This catalog was by no means random and was carefully crafted through Whitman's research. In the time between the two publications, Whitman's manuscripts reveal a note to self stating he wanted to write a poem that describes the whole particular and ensemble of a first-rate, healthy human body. The note also describes where Whitman intended to look for body parts for his poem by reading the latest anatomical works, by talking with physicians, and by studying the anatomical plateau. Another manuscript, written between 1855 and 1856, reveals a lengthy list of body parts. Most of these body parts do appear in the 1856 edition's catalog. These manuscripts clearly reveal great care and revisions Whitman spent just between these two editions. Another piece of evidence that Whitman did in fact revise his poem is seen through time, with the difference between the 1855 publication and the final publication of I Sing the Body Electric. In the 1856 edition, Whitman simply titled this poem, Poem of the Body. In fact, there is no reference to the term body electric at all in this edition. By the 1891 edition, Whitman added the first line, I sing the body electric. This first line then becomes the title of this poem. I sing the body electric is one of Whitman's most famous poems. Its fame did not just appear without any effort. In fact, this poem's fame came through the hard work, research, and revisions Whitman did. Another poem that shows Whitman's revisions through manuscripts is Come Said My Soul. Just by glancing at this manuscript, you can see Whitman's revisions and contemplation on the poem. Let's take a closer look at these revisions. The first revision is in the first line, when Whitman crossed out the body and changed it to my body. A similar revision occurs in the next line, when he changes the name to my name. In this line, Whitman also crossed out a word at the end, but it is now illegible. These revisions of crossing out and or adding phrases occur throughout this manuscript. Further evidence of Whitman's revisions can be seen by comparing the manuscript with the final poem. The manuscript reads, write our name, but the final poem reads, set to them my name. This is just one of the many examples of a change between the manuscript and the final version of this poem. Perhaps the most obvious piece of evidence that Whitman did in fact edit his poems is the several editions of Leaves of Grass. Leaves of Grass ultimately went through six entirely different editions. Each edition changed drastically from the design of the book to its content. The first edition in 1855 only had 12 poems, but the final edition had over 400 poems. The 12 original poems changed drastically, such as I Sing the Body Electric, which we talked about earlier in this video. The new poems added and changed the overall tone of the book. While the first few editions are very happy and optimistic, Whitman edits Leaves of Grass to develop a darker, more somber tone throughout the years, especially during the war years with the publication of Drum Taps. An example of a melancholy poem is The Wound Dresser, where a Civil War soldier relays some of the horrors of war to children. So next time someone tries to argue that Walt Whitman never edited his lengthy poems, make sure to point them to his manuscripts, changes in individual poems throughout several decades, and the overall change of tone, layout, and poems in Leaves of Grass.